Hi, and welcome to Rebalance MD's educational video presented by our wonderful new joint program navigators. This video is designed to prepare you for surgery and to get you ready for your recovery. Hello, before we begin, please have a pen ready and the following forms printed in front of you. The to-do list. Equipment to rent or purchase. My responsibilities. Feel free to pause the video now to get yourself ready. This session will begin with the to-do list. This form is designed to give you a checklist of all the major things you need to complete before surgery. We will go into detail of all the equipment that you will need. The equipment to rent or purchase form will allow you to circle or tick off what you will need. My responsibilities form is very important. This form will go through and help you plan how to prepare for surgery, what to expect in hospital, how to manage when you are home. We will also go through precautions to maintain after surgery. There are other forms that are included in your education package. These will be explained as we continue in the tutorial. Once you finish this education session and complete the responsibilities form, we need you to fax or email us a copy or drop it off in person at Rebalance MD. This is a requirement as the hospital needs to know that you have completed your education session. Please have the to-do list ready in front of you. The first item on this list is your pre-op exam with your family doctor. During this visit, your family doctor will fill out a form that is required by the hospital. If you do not have a family doctor, you can go to a walk-in clinic and request a pre-op exam. This needs to be completed as soon as possible. If you are booked as a cancellation, this appointment still needs to be completed. Again, please do this as soon as possible. You will need to complete some preoperative tests required by your surgeon. The requisitions for these tests will be provided to you by the new joint program. These tests include a templating x-ray of your hip or knee and chest, an ECG of the heart, and some blood work. The tests need to be completed in an island health location. There is no appointment necessary. You will be served on a first-come, first-served basis. There is also no fasting required. Remember to bring your BC service card and be prepared to pay for two to four hours of parking. A good book or magazine isn't a bad idea either. The Island Health locations in Victoria, where your pre-op tests can be completed, include the following. Saanich Peninsula Hospital, Royal Jubilee Hospital, or Victoria General Hospital. Please refer to your guide for doing pre-op tests for the specific departments and their hours of operation. For the patients who live out of town, please call your local hospital to inquire about their hours of operation. Please confirm with your navigator out-of-town options for your pre-operative tests. If you are having your knee replaced and your surgeon is Dr. Burnett, Dr. Pugh, or Dr. Camus, you need to complete your pre-op x-rays at the Royal Jubilee Hospital. For the patients who do not live in Victoria, you may need to plan an extra trip to Victoria to complete the pre-operative knee x-rays. Please complete these tests as close to 30 days prior to surgery as possible. It will allow us more time to review the results and address any abnormalities. If you are having symptoms of a bladder infection, such as burning when voiding, foul-smelling urine, urinary frequency, and pelvic pain, we advise you to follow up with your family physician and have it treated and cleared up prior to surgery. 
please notify your surgeon's office or navigator if a bladder infection is suspected. You will need equipment to help you with your daily activities after surgery. Your navigator will provide you with a list of recommended equipment and options for where to get it from. Most of this equipment can be rented or purchased from a local medical supply store or at Rebalance MD. These expenses can often be claimed, so it is a good idea to check with your extended health benefits provider to see what is covered and what documentation is required. Your navigator will provide you with a blank prescription for the equipment that you can submit with your receipts to your extended health benefits provider. Some items may be available from local loan cupboards, although their supply may be limited. All Red Cross loan cupboards require a signed referral from a health care professional. For out-of-town Red Cross locations, your navigator will provide you with the signed referral form or will fax it on your behalf. The Victoria Red Cross has a very specific referral process. The new joint program needs to fax the signed referral directly to them and they will call you four to seven days before surgery when your order is ready to be picked up. The Victoria Red Cross does have a limited amount of equipment and receive a large number of referrals. So they ask that if you do have extended health benefits, to use those to purchase equipment so that you can free up their equipment for other people in the community. Other Greater Victoria Loan Cupboards do not require signed referral forms. Contact them around one week before surgery unless otherwise specified. Once you get your equipment, Set it up and practice. This way, you will familiarize yourself with the equipment and be able to return or exchange any items that do not fit or work. You do not need to bring any equipment to the hospital. We have provided you with a shopping list of items you should purchase or borrow before surgery. The items on this list, as well as any piece of equipment necessary, are all available at one bracing, located at Rebalance MD shortly past reception. Here at One Bracing, we look forward to conveniently providing you with any equipment you need for your upcoming surgery. We have competitive pricing and our staff is knowledgeable about your surgeon's recommendations. As we go through the education session, we will explain each shopping list item in more detail. Please remember to bring your printed prescriptions when purchasing all the items. The pre-admission clinic visit will include a medication review by a hospital pharmacist as well as a possible anesthetic consult if your surgeon has required you to have one. Sometimes the medication review will be done over the telephone. If you are booked to see an anesthesiologist, this consult will either take place at Rebalance MD or at the hospital. It is important to have all your pre-op tests done before this appointment so the anesthesiologist can make a proper assessment of your health status. This will happen any time from when your surgery was booked up to the day before surgery. For further anesthetic information, please visit our website and look at our anesthetic video online. As a patient waiting for joint replacement, your role is the most important one. Through each stage, there are specific responsibilities you will be required to plan for and complete to ensure the success of your recovery. Please have my responsibilities ready in front of you. As we go through the remainder of the education video, you will need to fill in the blanks. Your anticipated length of stay in hospital can be as little as one to two nights. This is determined by your surgeon and whether or not you reach the discharge criteria, including pain control, mobility, and medical stability. We feel as though it is to your advantage to be discharged as soon as possible as patients tend to be most comfortable at home or in a nurturing environment. Shortly after you receive your surgical date, you will receive your surgical package by mail or by email. In this package, you will receive your general guidelines for fasting. This will explain when you are to stop eating and drinking. 
You will also receive direction for your pre-operative showers, which will be explained in more detail later in this video. Directions on when to stop taking certain medications will also be included. Please read this package thoroughly once you receive it. Within one week before your surgery date, you will receive the time to arrive at the hospital. This information will come by email or a phone call from the surgical booker at Rebalance MD. It is recommended that you make arrangements before surgery for key rides that you will require after surgery. These include your ride home from the hospital and a ride to your surgeon's follow-up appointment as well as to your physiotherapy appointment. Whoever is picking you up from the hospital will need to have your two-wheeled walker in the trunk of the car. If you have stairs that you need to do to get into your home, please have a cane close to the front door. Another thing to consider is that you will need to stop at a pharmacy on the way home from the hospital. You will also need to arrange a ride to your follow-up appointment with your surgeon, usually around two to four weeks after surgery, as well as to your physiotherapy appointment. Please watch the video on how to get in and out of a car as a passenger and practice this before surgery. You will be restricted from driving for four to six weeks after surgery. Your surgeon will discuss when you should return to driving at your follow-up appointments. The major factor for driving is brake response time. You need to be able to slam on the brakes with your right leg should you need to stop suddenly. Therefore, if you are having your right leg operated on, it will be around six weeks until you can drive. You also need to be off any prescription narcotic pain medication. If you are having your left leg operated on, it also depends on whether you have a standard or automatic transmission. As you can see, there are many factors to consider before driving, so please discuss this further with your surgeon at your follow-up appointment. On the responsibilities form, please fill in the first blank space with the person who will be picking you up from the hospital. Please review your knee or hip booklet prior to your surgery. Make sure that you prepare your home by removing any area rugs that pose a tripping hazard. You may also want to move certain pieces of furniture so that a nice, clear, wide path is available for you to mobilize through with your two-wheeled walker. We also encourage our patients to set up and practice using all the required equipment prior to going in for your surgery. After surgery, it will be very beneficial for you to have some help. You will be able to mobilize within your home when you are discharged, but it is recommended that you limit standing to less than five minutes per hour, especially in the first week or two following surgery. Therefore, you will need help with many chores such as cooking, cleaning, laundry, grocery shopping, and driving. Please be aware that if you do not have a plan for help after surgery, the hospital will not organize this for you. All planning must be done in advance. If you do not have this organized, the hospital will still discharge you once you meet discharge criteria. Again, you can be discharged in as little as 24 to 48 hours after surgery, so make sure that you have a plan in place for post-op help. If you have any questions regarding help after surgery, please feel free to contact your navigator. We can provide you with our resource booklet that lists local respite facilities, home nursing care, transportation options, medical equipment stores, grocery stores offering home delivery, and pet care. On the responsibilities form, please write down who your plan for help after surgery is, such as your spouse, family member, friends, home care, or respite facility. We want to reduce the risk of infection to your new joint as much as possible, so ensuring that you're infection-free prior to the joint replacement is very important. Please notify Rebalance if you have any symptoms of an infection or fever, a cold or flu, a 
an open wound, or a weeping rash. Good oral hygiene is also important to reduce your infection risk. We advise that any dental work, including cleaning, is done three months before surgery. If you are booked for surgery and a dental emergency occurs, please contact your surgeon's office immediately. The surgeon will decide whether or not to proceed or postpone your surgery. Drinking alcohol up until your surgery date increases the chance of experiencing delirium. Delirium is a temporary acute state of confusion. It is therefore important to begin tapering alcohol consumption at least one week prior to your surgical date. Smoking can delay healing of both the incision as well as the joint itself. Nicotine constricts blood vessels causing the joint and the incision to get less oxygen and less healing nutrients. If you smoke, this is a good time to quit. We will work with you with a smoking cessation program called Quit Now, and we are happy to send in a referral to the Quit Now program for you. Please contact your navigator or a surgeon's office to help organize this. What to pack. When thinking about what you'll need to bring for your stay in hospital, the following items will be useful. Comfortable loose clothes, making sure your pants are loose in the legs as your joint will be swollen after surgery, making tighter pants hard to put on. Good walking shoes that have a heel or a strap and that are closed toed. Personal items that you may want to bring in, such as a toothbrush or a hairbrush. Please label any cases for dentures, eyeglasses, or hearing aids. Please do not bring any valuables such as cash or jewelry. If you do want to bring in valuables such as a laptop or iPad, we suggest having someone bring it to you when you are recovering on the unit. Ensure you do not wear any deodorants, lotions, perfumes, or makeup. You will need to do some special showers the night before and the morning of your surgery to quasi-disinfect your skin. You will receive written instructions on how to do these showers in your surgical package. You can purchase the chlorhexidine scrubs here at Rebalance MD and at most pharmacies. A key point about these showers is that you will need to do some laundry planning, as everything that touches your skin after the shower needs to be clean. It is a good idea anyways to do an extra few loads of laundry before surgery so you have less to worry about after. The night before your surgery, have a regular shower. Wash your hair with your shampoo and conditioner, your body with soap. Break open scrub number one and lather it up. Then scrub from the chin down. You do not need to put it on your face or in your hair. Every inch of your body. So if there are some inches, like your feet, or in between your shoulder blades, that you just can't reach, you can get creative with a long-handled shoehorn. Attach the scrub with dental floss or an elastic band, and voila, you have a long-handled scrubber. Please clean your private areas last. Now you need to make sure you get the bathroom nice and hot and steamy, as you need to let the suds sit on your skin for two minutes. Thoroughly rinse off, then dry yourself with a freshly clean towel, get into freshly clean pajamas, and sleep in freshly clean sheets. Please do not put on any lotions, powders, makeup, deodorant, aftershave, hairspray after this shower. You need to remove any nail polish from the fingers and the toes, so this is not a good time for a pedicure. Also, remove any jewelry. The next morning, do the exact same thing with scrub number two. Dry yourself off with a second clean towel and get yourself into the clean clothes that you'll be wearing to the hospital. Please fill in the two blanks on your responsibilities form. Let's take a look at what happens to your knee when you get a knee replacement. Total knee arthroplasty or replacement is a surgical procedure in which a diseased or damaged knee joint is replaced with an artificial joint. Your knee is made up of the lower end of your thigh bone or femur, the upper end of the shin bone or tibia, and the kneecap or patella. 
Most replacement joints consist of a metal femoral component, a plastic tibial component held in a metal tray, and a plastic patellar component. The procedure begins with an incision on the front of the knee and the kneecap is moved to the side. Damaged bone and cartilage at the end of the femur are cut away and the bone is measured and cut to fit into the femoral component, which is then attached. Next, damaged bone and cartilage at the top of the tibia are cut away and the bone is measured and cut to fit into the tibial component. A metal tray is fit against the flat cut top of the bone with its stem inserted into the bone. A plastic insert is snapped into the tibial tray. The femoral component slides on it when the knee is bent. The damaged portion of the kneecap may be replaced by a mushroom-shaped prosthesis. The resectioned patella and prosthesis are attached to other components. Measurements and tests to ensure balance and movement are done during and after surgery. Knee replacement can significantly reduce pain and improve function. Like all surgery, there are associated risks. Physical therapy and realistic expectations are important for successful recovery. Your joint replacement is now complete. After your surgery, you will be taken to the recovery room while your anesthetic wears off. From here, you will be taken to the surgical unit for the remainder of your stay. During your hospital stay, you will be lying in bed most of the time. A significant decrease in mobility can cause congestion to build and sit at the bottom of your lungs. If this congestion cannot be cleared, it can cause lung complications, such as pneumonia. On your responsibilities form, please print lung complications in the blank space provided. To help clear your lungs, it is recommended that you take 10 deep breaths every hour that you are awake. Deep breathing causes air to get to the bottom of the lungs, moving and clearing the congestion. Periodic coughing after taking a deep breath is also advisable as coughing can also clear the lungs. It is important to pump your ankles up and down while in hospital at least 10 times per hour. This action reduces the risk of developing a blood clot in your calf. On your responsibility form, please print blood clots in the fill in the blank spot. Every patient will be prescribed a blood thinner. After surgery, you'll be mobilizing less, causing a decrease in circulation, and this will increase your risk for getting a blood clot. Therefore, your blood thinner is very important. Please take this medication for as long as your surgeon prescribes. Your surgeon may prescribe one of the following three medications. The first is Delta Parin. This is a self-injection that the nurse will teach you how to give yourself. You should be advised that this medication can be quite expensive when you fill the prescription at the pharmacy. It can be hundreds of dollars depending on how long you need to be on it. The second is aspirin. Some surgeons also prescribe aspirin as a blood thinner. It is important to continue this medication for as long as the surgeon has prescribed it. Remember, if this is prescribed for you, it is to reduce the risk of blood clots and not to help manage pain. The third is Xarelto or Rivaroxaban. This medication is another medication that might be prescribed. It is a pill and also may be expensive. The blood thinner that you will be on will be decided by your surgeon after surgery. This is based upon many issues such as your medical history, weight, and surgeon preference. Remember, your blood thinner is very important for a safe and successful recovery. If you are prescribed Daltaparin, a self-injection technique guide will be provided to you by the hospital. This includes website access to a video demonstration. Venapro is a compression device that can reduce blood clots and minimize lower leg swelling. Apply it to your calf as being demonstrated. Press and hold the button on the top of the device. It will start the compression. This device is rechargeable and lasts about four hours. 
To charge it, place the cord into the device's port and plug into an electrical outlet. The best time to wear Venapro is when you are lying or sitting for long periods. Ideally, you want to continue using Venapro for four to six weeks after surgery or while you are on your blood thinner. If you have a medical condition that increases your risk for blood clots, this could be very valuable. Also, this device can come in handy during airplane flights to help increase circulation. This is a unique device sold only at one bracing located at Rebalance MD. Please note that this device is a recommendation, but it is not mandatory. This device has a significant cost. Please contact One Bracing to inquire about the price. If you have extended health benefits, please check with your plan to see if it is covered. It will be termed as pneumatic limb compression device. This item is added to your prescriptions in your education package. You will receive written prescriptions for your pain medication and your blood thinner medication when you leave the hospital. You will need to fill these prescriptions on your way home, so it is a good idea to put a mental picture in your mind as to your drive home from the hospital. You will need to stop at a pharmacy, drop off the prescription, then either wait for it to get filled or have someone drive you home and they go back and pick it up. That is why you need the two-wheeled walker in the trunk of the car, so you can get out and move around a bit if you need to wait. If you are having surgery at the Royal Jubilee Hospital, there is an outpatient pharmacy that you can use. However, they are only open Monday to Friday. So if you have surgery on Thursday and are due to go home on Saturday after your two-night stay, you will need to find a community pharmacy to fill your prescriptions. Your physiotherapy exercises are very important after surgery. In the hospital, you will meet with a physiotherapist the day after surgery, if not sooner. They will give you your exercise guide with instructions on how many of the exercises to do and how often. Please follow those exercises after discharge from the hospital until meeting with the outpatient physiotherapist. Physiotherapy is free at Rebalance MD, Saanich Peninsula Hospital, or any Island Health Hospital. You are welcome to go to a private physiotherapist, however, you will need to cover the cost. You will have regular physiotherapy appointments, the first one being within one week of surgery. It is very important to complete your daily exercises. We want you to focus on your bending and straightening of the knee. The scar tissue in your knee will form quickly, resulting in difficulty achieving a desired bend and straighten if you do not maintain your exercises. If you are coming to Rebalance MD, we will provide you with your first appointment. If you are going to Saanich Peninsula Hospital, they will call you with an appointment once you are discharged from hospital. If you do not hear from them shortly after you are discharged, please call them. If you are going elsewhere, please call that location to arrange an appointment. Pain management after joint replacement is crucial to your recovery. It is important for you to stay ahead of the pain. A common way to reference your pain after surgery is by using a scale from 0 to 10, where 0 means you have no pain and 10 means the worst pain imaginable. The best time to take your pain medication is when your pain level is around a 3 or 4, uncomfortable but bearable. This way, you will require a smaller dose of pain medication to bring your pain level back to a comfortable range, such as a 1 or 2. If you wait until your pain level reaches 7, 8 or 9, you will need a higher dose of pain medication. This can lead to nausea, drowsiness and dizziness and should be avoided. There are a variety of pain medications that your surgeon may order for you. Please refer to the pain control after surgery portion of your knee or hip surgery booklet provided. It is important in the transition from hospital to home to maintain consistent dosing. If your surgeon gave you prescriptions for two painkillers, it is important to only use one medication at a time. Please refer to the pain control at home portion of your hip or knee surgery booklet.
Using ice is very important in your recovery, especially in the first few weeks. Knees like to swell a lot after surgery. This is a normal part of your recovery, but it can cause significant discomfort. Using ice after a knee replacement is crucial. It will be one of the best ways to minimize swelling and manage pain. There are two good options to icing, ice packs and a cryotherapy machine. If you are using ice packs, we suggest having four to six ice packs in the freezer. Use two at a time, one on either side of the incision. We suggest keeping the ice pack on for 15 to 20 minutes. It is advised that you do not keep the ice pack on for an extensive period of time to avoid frostbite. Your tissues need to warm up to allow for blood circulation to aid in healing. Repeat this every four to six hours. It is a good idea to ice after your exercises or if you have been up for a long period of time. A cryotherapy machine can be a very convenient method of icing. A cryotherapy machine is made up of a mini cooler that you fill with ice and water. The machine pushes this cold fluid through a tube and into a sleeve, which you secure around your joint with a Velcro belt. You can control the temperature using a dial ranging from cold to very cold. The machine will stay cold for up to six hours. A tip to minimizing the amount of crushed ice you will need is to freeze yogurt or margarine containers and place the chunk of ice in the cryotherapy unit with water. A frozen block takes longer to thaw than crushed ice. To use the cryotherapy machine, make sure you have a barrier between your bare skin and the sleeve, such as a thin towel or pants if you are wearing them. Apply the sleeve and secure both Velcro straps so that it is snug but not too tight. Remember to read the manufacturer's instructions. Cryotherapy machines are an investment and can cost two to four hundred dollars depending on make and model. They are sold at most medical equipment stores as well as at One Bracing here at Rebalance MD. If you have extended health benefits, please check with the company to see if they cover the cost of this item. We have added this item to your prescriptions provided in your education package. For optimal effects to reduce swelling, use ice while lying down with your surgical leg elevated on pillows. It is a good idea to ice after your exercises or if you have been up for a long period of time. Continue to use ice regularly until your swelling and pain is better managed and you continue to recover. This can be anywhere from two to six weeks or longer if you feel ice is still helpful. Most patients will have some degree of swelling postoperatively and it can vary greatly from patient to patient. For knees, there will be swelling to the operative leg, both above and below the knee, possibly associated with some bruising. For the first two weeks, you should really limit the amount you're on your feet to five to 10 minutes for every hour. Remember that ice and elevation are important to control your swelling. Controlling your swelling early on is pivotal to getting a good result when you go to your physiotherapist. A sudden increase in the amount of pain or swelling in your leg especially associated with tenderness in your calf or thigh, should prompt an urgent phone call to the surgeon's office or your navigator. You will be responsible for your own dressing change after surgery. Different surgeons have different dressing directions and preferences. Please follow your dressing change guidelines provided in your package. The guidelines will specify instructions as to when to change your dressing or whether to leave the dressing completely alone. If you need to change your dressing, it is very straightforward, like changing the band-aid on a paper cut. Remember to wash your hands before peeling off the old dressing slowly. 
Without touching the incision, apply a new dressing over the incision. If you've had a knee replacement, make sure your knee is slightly bent before applying the new dressing. The wound does not need to be cleaned with anything or disturbed in any other way. Press down the edges firmly of the new dressing to achieve a good seal so that it will be waterproof if it is a waterproof dressing. There are a variety of dressings you can choose to purchase. The first, least costly, is called Mipor. It's a cotton dressing that comes in rolls that you can cut to size or in pre-cut strips. You can purchase Mipor from most pharmacies or home health stores. Mipor is not waterproof, therefore, before each shower, you will be required to waterproof your dressing with saran wrap and waterproof tape. There are two specialty dressings preferred by our surgeons. The first one is called Mepilex. It is waterproof and sold at One Bracing here at Rebalance MD or at the diabetic store on Douglas Street. The second waterproof option is Aquacel AG. The absorbent pad is impregnated with silver, which is a natural antimicrobial. The cost for one specialty dressing can be between $20 and $50. There is drainage that can occur to your dressing for both hips and knees. If drainage completely fills your dressing and it is overflowing, or if you have any other concerns, please contact your surgeon's office or your navigator. Please note the knee in particular can be red post-op and warm to touch. This does not generally indicate an infection. Again, please contact your surgeon's office or navigator. The surgeons like to manage their incisions post-op. Going to your family doctor or emergency room first may result in you being put on unnecessary antibiotics. Infection after total joint replacement can be a very serious complication. Fortunately, our local rates of infection are similar to most big centers at approximately 1-2% to of joint replacement surgeries. Going into surgery, there are some things that can be done to help reduce the risk of infection. For a person with diabetes, optimal blood sugar control is paramount prior to surgery. Dental work especially any dental infections, need to be dealt with prior to surgery. Open sores or wounds, especially near the surgical site, cannot be present at the time of surgery and need to be addressed if present. If there's a possibility of an active bacterial infection, such as pneumonia or urinary tract infection, for example, this also needs to be treated prior to surgery. After surgery, Signs of infection include the following. Redness, swelling, fever and chills, a significant increase in pain, or significant drainage from the incision. However, with a true infection, it is usually when you are experiencing more than one of these symptoms. If you are concerned, please contact your navigator or surgeon's office. We, your surgeons, want to be the one to assess your surgical site. Don't go to just a walk-in clinic or your GP's office. If you suspect a surgical infection and it is an evening or a weekend, there is an on-call orthopedic surgeon available at both the Royal Jubilee Hospital or the Victoria General Hospital. Again, if you have any concerns, if possible, please contact Rebalance MD first. Constipation is a side effect of surgery that can be difficult to manage. There are many factors that will prevent you from being regular. One of the biggest culprit for constipation is pain medication. Plan on keeping high fiber foods in stock and try to keep hydrated. If you are normally prone to constipation, there are a variety of different stool softeners and laxatives. You can discuss your options with your pharmacist. Bottoms up! After surgery, you will need to see your surgeon for your follow-up appointment. This can be anywhere from two to four weeks after surgery. When you have been discharged from the hospital, please call to book this appointment if you have not done so already. Three months after your joint replacement, you are able to continue dental work as necessary. Remember, good oral hygiene is important. 
after surgery, your knee needs time to heal. So for the next three months, you will need to maintain your knee precautions. 80% of your knee recovery will happen in the first three months. However, it can take up to two years for your knee to reach maximum healing. In the first three months, you will need to adhere to your knee precautions to allow the knee to heal and stabilize. These include no deep squats, no kneeling on the surgical knee, no placing a pillow under the knee when you are lying on your back. You may place a pillow under the entire length of your leg as long as it doesn't cause your knee to remain bent. It is okay to use a pillow under the entire length of your leg or between your legs when you lie on your non-surgical side. Please write your knee precautions on your responsibilities form. Lifetime precautions after knee or hip replacement surgery. There are controversies as to acceptable activities after hip or knee replacement. Low impact activities that avoid extreme range of motions are acceptable. It's always best to avoid high impact activities such as running or jumping in order to preserve the longevity of the prosthesis. Any other specifics should be discussed with your own surgeon. We recommend that you stay close to town for the first six weeks after surgery. Complications are most likely to happen in this time frame, and we want you to be able to be assessed by your surgeon if necessary. After that, it depends on your travel health insurance. Many travel insurance policies don't cover conditions that have changed in the last 90 days or three months, and surgery is definitely a change. Due to the increased risk of blood clots after surgery, it is recommended that you delay airplane travel for three months after surgery. You will set off the airport metal detectors. You will not be given a card as cards can be forged. You will need to let security know before you go through and they may spend some extra time with you afterwards or send you through the x-ray scanner if that is available. Please allow extra time for check-in at the airport. You have now completed your joint education session. Please go over your responsibilities form, filling in all the blanks. Please sign it once it is complete. Make a copy for yourself if you feel it would be useful. Return a copy of this to your navigator, either by dropping it off at Rebalance MD or by mail, fax, or email. We wish you all the best in your replacement journey. Remember, your navigator and the Rebalance MD team are available to help in any way we can.